Hey guys, welcome back. So last time I told you about a little bit of a practice session that I had out here with my wife. I was testing out some theories to see if all of the stuff that I've done over the last two years going through all these different teachings, trying to see if I had retained a lot of, of good information and been able to pick out the good pieces here and there to combine it all into something really simple and really repeatable. And I had her out here working with me and we got proof of concept last week. This week, I wanna expand a little bit on that. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to try and help your game as I've done for over two years now. I'm gonna get in a little practice out here this evening. I'm gonna play my round tomorrow. And if you haven't seen my content before, this is the first time you're seeing any one of my videos. I would like to tell you just a little bit about what goes on here. I test out different swing methods, drills, different products, different clubs, approaches to the game in order to try and make myself a better golfer and in turn being your personal guinea pig so that maybe you can benefit from some of the good and the bad that comes out of my experiments. If you remember and you watched Wednesday's video prior to this one, you'll know that I tried to get some proof of concept. I'm working on trying to take some of the lessons that I've learned, the best things that I've learned and distill everything down to one really simple basic swing and approach to the game in order to try and become better and shoot lower scores is what we all want to do, right? And I brought my wife out here who is basically a novice golfer. She never practices. She doesn't read anything, watch any videos. She doesn't have uh, any sort of idea about what the pros are doing and what people are trying to teach her. She just knows what she tries to do with the golf ball. She has some very simple concepts that I just think are just so awesome. And one of those is to take this club and grip it and just hit the ball and try to hit it that way. And it really is that simple to her and to, I might add, quite a few people out there who are able to really simplify the game. And I am the complete opposite of that. I overcomplicate everything. I overthink everything. And I'm betting that a lot of you out there are the same way that I am. And if that's the case, you'll know, just like I know, that that is no way to go about playing golf. And it is very, very difficult to play well and consistent from a position where you're overthinking and overanalyzing every single detail. And you're constantly flipping back and forth and changing your swing, your game, your mechanics, and all of that stuff. So I wanna try and take a lesson out of her book. And she mentioned something that made me think instantly of Manuel de la Torre. Now, if you haven't heard of Manuel de la Torre, he was the 1986 PGA Teacher of the Year. So he was the very first one that they had and he gave a speech. You can find those recordings on YouTube. I highly recommend you go listen to him. Uh, Manuel, his, his father's name was Angel and he was a professional in Spain and then he became a professional over here in the States. And Manuel's father, Angel, was actually mentored and studied under the tutelage of a very famous golf coach Way back when, he's got books out. His name is Ernest Jones. Now, Ernest Jones, his entire philosophy was just to swing the club head. And Angel taught the same basic principles, but Manuel came along and he was a little bit of a rogue. He, he took a lot of Ernest Jones' teachings and without going against them, he tried to, to make them his own. He had added some things to it, like instead of swinging the club head, you swing the entire club. But I thought it was just interesting that my wife without knowing anything about Ernest Jones or Manuel de la Torre, I thought it was just so interesting that she took one of his basic concepts and, and it applied it instinctively. It just was her own. And that concept is to take the club from over here and put it over there. I mean, it's really that simple. But today I want to focus in on just one, one little piece of that because when I was introduced to, to Manuel De La Torre's videos and all of that, I had, a, I had a viewer leave a comment down below. I hadn't heard of him before, so a little over two years ago, somebody told me about him, and I'm so grateful that I found out and, and researched him. And I keep coming back to a lot of Manuel's teachings because his philosophy was that if you learn how to use the tool and apply the tool and make the tool your focus, that the body just needs to be responsive. Manuel actually says this quite often in a lot of his videos. If, if, you, if you have your grip on the club and you set up to the golf ball, then you're just worried about swinging the club in the direction of the target and the body, you have no conscious thought 
whatsoever. You, you give no concern to the body and its movements and its positions or where it is in space at any given point during the swing. It's all about creating a fluid swing of the entire club. Manual says the entire club, grip, shaft, club head, everything, because they're all attached to just give that away and make a swinging motion toward the target and let your body, your entire body, your head, your torso, your arms, your hands, your legs, your feet, everything just be in response to the free swinging motion of that club in a circular path toward the target. So one of the most basic things that I'm trying to implement and is a component in my game, in my swing, is to make this very natural, unforced, circular swinging motion toward the target. And I'm trying to swing the entire club. I'll start off face on here because I'm always shooting down the line and I'm trying to give you guys some different perspectives. There's plenty of other things that are going into this that you may pick up on, but there will be other videos to follow. Most of the modern golf coaches are trying to get your body to move a certain way. And, and it does relate. They do talk about club position and why they want to get your body into those positions and why they want you to make these movements and that series and that sequence because it gets the club into that sequence. But Manuel always said that if you get the club moving right, it really doesn't matter what the body's doing. That's down to the individual. All you need to focus on is swinging the entire club toward the target. Now I'm not swinging hard, it's just a nine iron. I haven't really warmed up properly. I'm just trying to take the club over here and then put it over there. And I want to brush the grass Manual always says brush the grass, which is a lot like Sean Clements cut grass in that direction. And I just want to brush the grass about two inches in front of this golf ball. That is very, to me, a very simple thought. And that thought and that focus and that intention means that I'm probably going to catch the golf ball first. And then I'm going to brush the ground at the low point of the circular motion about two inches after the golf ball. At least that's my intention. And there's some room for error in it. I'm not always going to be able to hit the ground in the exact same spot because I'm not a pro, but it's just a really simple swing in motion and solid contact. It's, it's hard to mess that up unless you get some sort of a, a brain fart. You know, if, if I take my focus off of my intention for a second during the swing and I start thinking about, ooh, my hand doesn't feel right there, the shot is going to be a disaster. It's going to be a disaster for me. So one thing that I'm really working on is just to maintain that focus of intention right there in that spot. And whatever happens here and whatever happens over there, I, I just can't, I can't control all that stuff. I just got to give it away and let it swing and just think about two inches in front of the golf ball. Now that swing is probably not going to look like some textbook PGA Tour Pro. It's probably not going to look absolutely perfect when you break it down in slow-mo and you put it on some Telestrator and you get a golf coach of the modern era looking at it. But if I just keep my intention two inches in front of that golf ball, trying to make my low point there and just brush the grass in that spot, I don't have to try and kill it. I don't have to worry about where I am in space with my hands or my arms or are my hips firing or are my feet in the right position. I just think about that spot and it's just over and over. It's easily repeatable. I've gone for so long trying to, to go by the guidance of conventional modern golf instruction and I find that a lot of the things that they're trying to teach to these pros are so much harder for somebody like me or maybe even you to implement because we don't have the kind of time that these guys have. We don't have the constant guidance from coaches, you know, who know exactly what they're talking about, access to all the equipment. Now I know the pros in the old days didn't either, but they certainly put in a lot of time to develop the skills that they had. And it's time that a lot of us weekend golfers, hobby golfers, playing once or twice a week golfers. We just don't have that to do. So for me, I think the instruction, and Manuel even said the same thing in his videos. A lot of times I've seen him in those videos talk about the fact that what he would teach to pros 
would be different from what he taught to club golfers. And with pros, I think what they're trying to do is optimize. I've said this before in previous videos. If you're going to be a professional golfer, of course you have to go for the optimal, the most prime. But with us, we just need to get out. We want to go out and shoot in the 70s. That's our goals. If we can do that, most of us, I would say probably 85% of us weekend golfers would be absolutely thrilled. And so if I could do that, if I could keep most of my scores in the 70s and I could look back on a year's worth of rounds and I could see that 75% of my rounds were in the 70s, I would be just through the roof. I'd be over the moon. And I really think you can do that without being a super long. I think you can still hit some bad shots from time to time. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to hit the perfect shot shape. And you don't have to hit the ball 380 yards with a 7 iron. I just don't believe that. So again, my intention is just two inches in front of the golf ball. I'm going to brush the grass that way. And I just want to make sure that I'm swinging the club unmanipulated without trying to force my body or the club into positions. Just let the club go from here over to there and brush the grass in that direction. So there you go. And it's really, it's really solid. And it's just a rhythmic sort of tick-tock motion. It's very rhythmic. And they say that, you know, rhythm, tempo, and timing, and all that, and that's down to the individual. And that speaks to the video that I'm going to be making coming up soon, where I'm going to talk about trying to find my natural tempo, my natural rhythms, and how maybe you can find yours if you apply the same sort of principles and ask yourself the same questions as I ask of myself. Stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one. Appreciate it.